Hey everybody, welcome to FabFit Friday. I am freshly back from teaching at the University of Kentucky's Master Volunteer Garment and Construction Training Program. And I got back really late last night, like literally it was after midnight. I slept in till like 9.30 which is so rare for me to do because normally I'm an early bird, but I was pooped. I don't know what it is about flying on a plane that makes one so tired, but um, I was a little tired, but I had an amazing time. So I wanted to just share some of my experiences with you about um, this training program and teaching at it. And then one of the members, Sue, gave me a little gift as a thank you. And when I opened it up, it was the coolest handmade note, uh, note cards. Hi. I have back sound. I don't know what that means, back sound. Um, I have back sound. It sounds bad. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Um, please check sound. Um, is that better if I do that? Judy? I haven't changed any of my settings, so I don't... Okay, good. I, I had another one of my audio inputs turned on for some reason. I'm sorry about that. Um, I had to switch things around last week when I hosted Trisha from the Creative Costume Academy. So I think I must have messed something up. Um, oh, hey, hey, Tana, welcome. Oh, it was a fan making noise. I do have my fan on, on low, but... My microphone won't pick that up, but the other thing will, and I shut it off. So now we've got the sound good. Um, I'm really excited today because I'm just going to do a fun little chat with you about this amazing sewing program, um, and then I'm going to we're going to do a quick holiday gift project, and I'm going to be sprinkling in um, quick holiday um, projects that you can make as gifts for people on your. Um, gift list. So I'm going to start with one that you can use actually as a Christmas or holiday card. And it's in, totally inspired by um, cards that were given to me by um, Sue Walsh, one of the members of this master volunteer uh, garment construction group. So this is the second year I've taught there. And what happens is I fly out to wherever they're going to hold this event, and this year it was in Cave City, Kentucky, at this really cool convention center, and the hotels were within walking des distance um, from the hotel. I tried to walk there two mornings, but there's so many helpful volunteers and um, agents and other people there. People offered to pick me up and bring me, so I actually never actually walked the whole way, but it was a really fun event. It was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I taught one class on Tuesday, my sewing mistakes class. Then I taught all day on Wednesday. Um, I taught how to sew knits with a sewing machine. And I taught um, how to adjust a non-stretch pattern for stretch fabric. And then on Thursday, I taught a sleeve fitting workshop. It was really fun. I had amazing help in my room. Carla was so helpful. She helped me pass out kits pieces and keep everything running smoothly. It was very, very nice. And all the people in the class were so talented and fun and, and we just had such a great time. So that's what I was doing this week. And on the last day, um, Sue walked by the table where I was sitting at lunch and she gave me this little package. And in the package were these note cards. And I think I'm just going to switch my view. Hey, Diane, welcome. I'm... All right, so I don't want you to have to look at that. Um, okay, so I'm going to do it like this. These are the cards from Sue Walsh. I put a link in the description for a free PDF for this card shape. I drew it in Illustrator um, to be similar to, to Sue's card. And 
I know Tana's asking me if there's a flipper mirror image. I'm sure there is. I just don't know how to find it. I, I'm literally, and I don't remember switching it either. So I'm a little annoyed. I'll have to fix it afterward because I don't want to, um, I don't want to take up any more time for you watching me scrambling around. But basically, this is the card. And what I did was I I put a, um, a link to the description, I mean, um, to the PDF in the um, description. So if you want to make this card, you can download the, the PDF for free. It's on my website. I also put a link to the University of Kentucky Master uh, volunteer garment construction group so you can check out this program. It's amazing to me how many people are willing to completely volunteer their time to spend two years getting certified in the program and then going out and teaching sewing in their counties. It's such an amazing program. I'm so excited that I am involved with it and I think I'll even get to go back next year. So you can make those cards. They fit into a five by five envelope. So these are the envelopes that came with the with the gifts, the gift that Sue gave me. And I really want to show you how. Let me just see if I can. Let me see if I can. Let me try one more time. If I can figure out how to, oh wait, trans, oh wait, flip vertically. Um, okay, so I have here, oh, maybe I need to rotate 180. Oh, I fixed it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I fixed it. Yay. Okay, so now I can show you like a normal video here. Um, all right, so you can see that I, I played with, making a shape. So I'm going to put Sue's cards away and I have one started here and I want to show you how, how simple this is going to be. So I took a piece of this. Um, this is paper from one of my books of scrapbooking paper. Okay. And it's a, um, this is like a metallic, see how it's kind of a, a pretty, so you can really um, play with you know, decorative papers or plain papers or colored co um, construction paper, whatever is a little bit heavier, like a card stock, you cut it out on the fold. Okay, so here it is on the fold. And basically, the template, which I didn't print out to show you, but again, it's in the description below. This, you, you print it out, you cut it out, and then this box in the middle is, is, the sizing to cut your fabric to make the spool of thread. Now, this one, is, I decided to use a holiday print to make like a holiday card. So what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna show you how to just put this together. And it's gonna be really nice and easy. Um, the first thing I did was, I took my, my holiday fabric right here. Let me just make this, change this here a little bit. Whoop. Make it a little brighter so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and I fussy cutted a design. Now to get the fussy shape, what I did was I actually made a, um, a template from my tracing paper so I could see where I was cutting. So like, let's say I wanted to just do some berries. I marked, I traced the center of the template, which is the place where the, the fabric goes. And the first thing I did was I fused interfacing to the wrong side, so it'll be a little bit firm. And then I traced the center of the template, which is the rectangle that you need for the size of, you know, the card you're gonna make. And then see what I can do with this template is I can s sort of see what I'm cutting out. So if you wanna make different, um, you know, if you want to use a print and capture different things, like, you know, like, let's say I want to do this one right here. I can use my sew tights. I'm on my sew tight magnetic board, which is amazing for stuff like this, because all I have to do is stick it on like this and then cut it out. So like this could be another one. So if you interface before you start cutting, then you don't have to worry about cutting your interfacing out the exact um, size. So this is just going to be another example. 
And you know, if you want to use your ruler, you can use your ruler. I'm just trying to show you here now that I've recovered and I have my <laughs> my view right side up. So see, this is kind of cool. It's some berries, right? So you can you can get one piece of fabric and make several different, you can make a collection of cards, right? Out of the same fabric and you can pick and choose and make it be um, um, you can make it be any holiday theme you like which is something that's very cool um, Tana is asking me could you use a window uh, a window card as a template couldn't you you absolutely could just anything where you can see through or be able to um, you know, see what you're you're cutting out if you're trying to fussy cut your your fabric for a certain print. So now I've got um, my designs, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my cutting board out of the way because I'm going to swing my sewing machine over here. This is another reason why I like this um, magnetic board so I can just lift it up and move it out of the way for a, a minute. Let's put it right there for now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drag my machine over and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about thread choices. So you wanna sew, if you look at this closely, this one is easier to see. You can see that she just basically zigzagged back and forth to make it look like thread, right? So it's a spool of thread and there's the thread and it's you know a little bit over the the print of the fabric. So I thought for holiday, I would try using this metallic, um, sort of a, it's like a creamy metallic thread. I'm gonna try that and see how that looks. Now when you use metallic thread, it's really important to use a metallic needle. So you can see what I have here is, is a Metallica needle. And I'm just gonna use size 14 because that's all I can find in my drawer at the minute. But if you're working with paper, well, actually, we're just working with the fabric, but if you're going to sew through paper and fabric, a smaller needle is better because it'll punch a smaller hole. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 14 because that's what I have in my stash at the moment. I packed up all my needles to go to Kentucky, and I haven't unpacked my suitcase yet. But I do have these. We're going to try it. And what I want to talk about here is... When you're working with metallic thread, it's always better for your thread to be on a vertical spool pin because when, oh, let me show you a slow, sorry. So when, when you're spooling off and it's a vertical, what happens is the, the spool turns and it doesn't twist off. So you can see it's almost like you're rolling toilet paper off a toilet paper roll when the spool is vertical. If you put it horizontally in your machine, it it coils off and it can get twisted. So always try to put metallic thread in a vertical spool pin or you know so it's coming off like toilet paper and it's not twisting. So that's the first consideration. The second consideration is well I already told you what the second consideration is. The second consideration is that you use a um, metallic needle. So I'm going to I'm going to use the um I'm going to use the bobbin thread I have in there. It's just a cream colored bobbin thread. And then I'm going to switch my needle. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch my needle to um from the one that's in here to a Metallica needle. Now, why is a Metallica needle good for metallic threads? I'm going to tell you. You can see here, I think if I hold it up close, I think you can see it's got a relatively large eye. Can you see the eye there, how long it is? And there's a little groove in the front to help it seat in there. So that's why the Metallica needle is good for metallic threads. So I've got that in there. Then I'm going to take my thread and I'm just going to put it through the vertical spool pin. I'm going to thread my machine and we're going to try it. So I'm hoping that it, my machine is going to like it. We'll see. I haven't used metallic thread on this machine yet. So this is my first try working with metallic thread. But I just thought for a holiday card it would be nice and give it a little glitz, right? 
And then I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to put my straight stitch foot on for now. But of course, you could do... Oh, hey Pat. Well, actually Pat, you know what? You really didn't miss much because first I was late. I didn't start till 1.30. Then my tabletop view was um, mirror imaged or flipped upside down and it took me 15 minutes to figure that out. So you're actually, you know, kind of right on schedule with me. I'm showing you how to make this note card that was given to me as a gift from one of my students who took my class at the Master Volunteer um, Garment Construction Group this week. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put on my zigzag foot in case I want to do something other than a straight stitch because of course you know when you're doing like paper when you're sewing on paper um, you might want to use a decorative stitch um, but I do want to keep it sort of simple in the spirit of the card that um, was given to me so now let's remind ourselves this is going to be the spool so if I get my card up here just to remind us what we're doing Okay, so in the end, this is going to be on here like this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zigzag back and forth to make it look like this is thread, even though it's a print. And actually, if you notice, the ones that um, Sue made me are just a, a general printed fabric. That actually might be better than using a seam. I don't know. We're going to have to see how it looks. But basically, I don't want to sew through the card and the fabric at this point, because remember, whatever you sew together with the card is going to show through on this side. See how you can see the stitching? So I'm just going to work with the fabric and that's why I interfaced it with my cotton fuse. So basically I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start zigzagging and I'm going to make my, oops, I'm going to make my stitch length about, I don't know, let's make it a big stitch length, like maybe three and a half. So let's just start stitching. Oh, if I plug my foot control in, I can do that. All right, so we're going to start stitching. And basically, I'm just going to go across. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to pivot. And I'm just going to go back and forth with this pretty metallic thread. And then I'm going to go back around again. You know, I'm just going to zigzag back and forth. You know, I think the other fun thing about this is I really think you could make this like ultra fancy too. Like you could really go to town with this and make it, you know, even more, you know, you can probably put a lot of personality into this and really just make it you know, look any way you want, depending on how you're stitching. But I'm just stitching along here. You know, as a sewer, you know, and I'm sure most of us watching are sewers, you can really appreciate, um, you can really appreciate the, um, you know, the, when someone gives you something homemade, you can really, really appreciate it. Uh, oh, no, Tana, I am going the right way. This, this spool is taller than it is wide, so it would be rolling around like this. So I am going the right way. But, you know, it's always good to check with me because you know I'm the queen of mistakes. So I'm just going to zip along here. I might fine tune my um, the way I go across. This is really my first. You're you're getting my maiden voyage on this project. I haven't fine tuned my process yet, but you know you can play with this and do it any way you want. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be exact. All right. So now I'm just gonna. I'll just finish right there. I'm just going to back tack right there and cut it. All right, so now let's look at this. Here's my spool. So you can see that my stitching is going in 
the right direction. Now see, I don't know if I love having the stitching over a bird. I'm going to have to think about that, but basically you can stitch as much or as little as you want to make it look like it's thread, right? So after you do that, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to stitch this to the card. And of course, I'm going to use my Sew Tight to hold this paper in place. This way I don't have to use any spray adhesive. I don't have to use any um, pins. You can't pin this with pins because um, if you do that, then you'll have holes. So these Sew Tights are going to be perfect for this project. I'm going to put the plastic side on the, on the underside because that's the side closest to the metal plate on my machine and I don't want it to stick there. So I'm going to get this into position like this and then I'm just going to put the metal top to the Sew Tight right here. And you can see that that's really secure. So that's really all I have to do to hold that, I think. Then I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to stitch around the edge to hold it to the card. So that's what I'm going to do now. So basically, let's just stitch around. You know, so if you wanted to make personalized holiday cards this year, I wanted to give you this idea well in advance because I get these good ideas and then I don't ever do them. Oh, Pat, Pat said this would be fun to drop the feed dogs and do um, a small amount of free motion quilting to highlight the berries, etc. Absolutely. I was thinking about that actually, um, doing some free motion. You know, I'm not even, you know, I'm not even really being super careful about being super straight here, but I think you can see this is going to make a really cool card. And I think if you have any sewers on your gift list, you know, they're going to really appreciate this because they know that you took the time to make it and it's also a fun, cool project. So look at that. I made a holiday card literally in five minutes. Isn't that cool? And then on the inside, all you have is the, um, is that. Of course, if you want it to be a little fancy, you could actually put um, fabric on the inside and sew through the two layers so you don't just see the stitching there. It'll be stitching fabric onto fabric, and then you could write over here. So if you wanted to make it a little bit fancier, put two layers of fab, you know, make sure the fabric is aligned before you put your sew tight on, you know, and then you can just stick this like this, stick this like that, and then you can sew through both layers so you don't see just the lines on the paper. So that's, that's kind of up to you, you know, depending on how fancy you want to make them. But do notice how big these holes are. The 14 needle makes giant holes right? So a smaller needle, like a size 11, would be better for working with paper. Um. <laughs> Carly D says, how cute. Things I will be doing at 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve, probably. <laughs> you know what? I, uh, I almost think these, that they go together so quickly, you can probably even use them as gift tags. And I think on the PDF um, pattern that I have I made, I think I called it a, um, a spool of thread gift tag or gift note. So you can use these any way you want. Um, I just I just thought this was so cool. I wanted to highlight it partly because um, I want to advertise and promote the, you know, the master um, volunteer garment construction program at the University of Kentucky. I think, you know, a huge shout out needs to be made for how fabulous that program is. Um, the, the person in charge of it at the university, Jeannie, is amazing. And they have extension agents for every county who support the volunteers. They are all wonderful. Um, people who retire from being a master volunteer or an extension agent then come back and participate in these things. It's really an amazing project. Now, I know this isn't garment sewing, but it's a really fun project. So, you know, make sure you download the, the free PDF. Um, you know, and if you want to design your own spool pattern, go ahead and do that too. It's, it's fairly simple. Um, 
you know, check out the University of Kentucky's program. Um, oh, Pat goes, <laughs> Carly will not be alone. Only question is red wine or spiked eggnog. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, my gosh. All right. So here, are the, I just want to show you again the, one that, the ones that Sue made because I was so delighted when I opened these. Um and looked at them. Look at how cool they are. So you can make like all purpose ones. Um, just this is just regular cardstock. I mean, how simple and cool is that? You know, and then do I have what did I do with my little thank you? No, I just want to show you. Um, oh see, look at the cute little card she gave me. Isn't this cute? Thank you. See, dear Jen, thanks for some for um, thanks so much for all you do for us. Love Sue Walsh. And I put Monroe County. It's very important to recognize all the different counties that participate in this. So I made sure I remembered that she was from Monroe County. Um, but this was a fun project. I want to show you one other thing. Now this is, this is like really kind of funny because I'm doing my Fab Fit Friday today. There's no fitting or sewing or garment related projects today. But, um, I know you might have heard me say that um, I wanted to, I'm learning to crochet, right? And on Instagram, I saw this post where, where someone was doing granny squares with literally thread. And so I was looking through the auction items. So one of the things they do during this event is they have donations that they auction off and then all the proceeds go to support the program. So basically I, um, I was looking through all the things and there was a huge selection of knitting needles and these crochet hooks. And as it turned out, Ashley bid on, this is that shiny here, sorry. Ashley bid on, the crochet hooks and she was one of my students she took all three of my classes this year and so I said to her I'm like oh my god oh my gosh I said I don't want knitting needles but I really want one of those little tiny crochet hooks that you can use to crochet with thread because I really want to try to learn to make granny squares which I have not even learned to make a granny square on a big um, needle yet but look at these needles in this box look at how tiny they are so like I'm talking about let me just pull out the really tiny ones um, so I am, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on a granny square extravaganza. I'm going to start with a, you know, a really convenient size to learn. So, you know, one that's a reasonable, um, you know, a reasonable way to do it. And if anybody is interested in granny squares, I have a lot of good friends who do that. My friend Cal Patch does. Um, Edie Ekman does, and actually Edie has some really nice books for crochet. And so I just want to show you, look at how tiny, this is how tiny I'm talking about. Like, I don't even think you can see this hook. It's so tiny. Let me see if you can see how tiny this, see how tiny that is? Look at that little tiny hook. And then I have, I mean, I have all the sizes probably in between this, this set of hooks goes from, you know, very, very small to, you know, more of an average size or like a regular size hook or, or whatever you would call that. See, I'm not a really a crocheter, but this size is a U.S. 15C? Um, 14, four, 14, I have no idea, but basically this hook is so small you can't even really see see the hook. So I'm going to be starting with something big, you know, something big like this to make my first granny square where I can see the hook. And I'm going to slowly go down to nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this one. Oh my God. This one is so tiny. I was wondering what this was. That's a cap to protect how tiny that hook is. That's kind of cool. Um, Oh, Pat says that mini crochet hooks are great for fixing thread snags on knits or burying serger threads. Well, that's a very good point. And I want to tell you, I am so excited to, I'm so excited to have these. Like, look at them. See how tiny they are? So I got all these from the auction and I shared them with Ashley. So thank you, Ashley, if you're watching for sharing these with me. Hey, Janie, welcome, welcome, welcome. 
We made cute little holiday cards. So go back and watch. There's a free PDF in the description below um, where you can get this PDF shape and then you can make these cards and I showed how to do it step by step. So um, this is part one of my holiday project guide for quick holiday projects for people on your gift list. So this one is sized to fit in a um, five inch square envelope. See. All right, so that is my exciting um, non-sewing, non-fitting FabFit Friday. Now, next week, I am going to be flying home. I'm teaching in Houston next week. This is my last travel of the year. So um, I'm leaving on Halloween to fly to Houston to teach at the Houston Quilt Festival. I will be back, but I will not be back in time for FabFit Friday. But I am going to do a Cool Tools so look for that. It's going to be something that will help you sew your tricky fabrics. Um, I'm also going to do a Fit Tip Tuesday. And um, if I have time, I may film a special episode of Subscriber Q&A because I got a question from somebody um, about last this week's Fit Tip Tuesday where I compared a forward neck and a forward shoulder. So I may explain expand upon that um, for Wednesday. It depends how much time I have between getting ready to leave for Houston um, and shooting my cool tools and my, my Fit Tip Tuesday. So I'm, I'm hoping to get three videos up for you next week while I'm not here, but if I can't, I'll at least have two. And I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'm sorry that I was late today. I was busy. I wanted to make the PDF and put a link to it in the description before um, before I um, uh, before I came on. Oh, Tana's asking me, did you finish decorating the front door for, with your granddaughter? No pictures? Oh, you know, I did. But here, this is the funny story about the Halloween thing. So in my house, I have, um, I have like an old light post that's at the end of the walk by the um, sidewalk. And then the walk comes up to the front door. And so I took all the spider webbing and I wrapped it around the, the, I have these two little pillars or like little sides to my porch that hold the little roof up. So I wrapped the stuff around there and then I stretched it all the way out near the road. And I sort of made like this tunnel, but my husband didn't like that. He thought it would impede the the postman from coming to our door. So he actually switched it and plastered it all over the bushes instead. Um, but actually I think that looks nicer and I do think it stays nicer because it did rain. So you know what, I will post some pictures in the, um, in our Facebook group, FabFit Friday. I didn't, I didn't take any pictures because when I finished decorating with Cameron, Lenny came out and redid it with her. So <laughs> I had to come, I had to leave to go teach a class on pattern review at three o'clock. So Lenny rejiggered it with her and it actually looks very nice. So I will send, I will post pictures of my holiday decorations um, for Halloween in, I can put them in our Facebook group and I'll also put them in the community tab so you can see them. And Judy is saying that our grandma crocheted doilies with with threads. See, I know. And here's the thing about the crocheting thing. I am, and I must, I think I talked about this before. I'm unique. I'm, I'm, I'm weirdly attracted to it. I enjoy it more than knitting for some reason. I don't know why, but I don't like the fabric it makes. I think it looks chunky. So my answer to that is try to size down my needle and get to be more delicate. And what I originally saw was someone making gr little granny squares that were this big, each one was like this big, made with thread weight fiber, maybe it was thread, and then hitching them together to make, make a hanky. So I just, and they were multiple colors. I mean, they were gorgeous. And so, and here's the funny thing. Now, this is how my husband is so in tune with me. Like, he's my number one fan. He's my tech support. But he also loves to think about things that I'm doing. So when I told him that I got these crochet hooks, he's like, honey, he's like, you could, you know your T with the above the bus seam? He loves to say above the bus seam. Um, 
you could take that center piece and crochet a lace piece for the center front of the T and then sew it together with knit. So he gave me that idea, and in my head I was always thinking I wanted to combine, you know, knitting or crochet with fabric in a garment. So I will be able to whip it around to um, be related to garment sewing once I get it going. But literally, first I have to learn a granny square, and I'll show you this book. Um, well, there's three of them, actually. I don't know. Uh, let me see. I've got two of them. So... This one right here is um, Crocheting Motifs. This is Edie Ekman's book. I bought all three of them. And then I got the one with the borders, Design a Border. And there's a third one that I have somewhere in my room that shows you how to do motifs and connect them all at the same time. So I'm very excited to crack this book open and make, you know, <laughs> make granny squares. I might have to, like, literally learn how to make a basic granny square first. I always like to jump in and do the hard thing, but I already tried to make a granny square before I learned how to double and single crochet and I couldn't. So I got I got reality slapped that I really need to learn, you know, to do the basic things first and then get to the complicated things. That's why I know I can't start with the teeny weeny little crochet hook. I have to start with a big crochet hook. Um, Oh, Tana says you can easily crochet edges of garments, necklines, armholes, sleeves, etc. I agree with you about the bulk of most crocheted items. Yeah, see, so I want to find a way to make it delicate and change it. The other one that might also answer to that would be uh, Tunisian um, crochet. That has more of a knitted look, and so I want to do that too. So I have all of these crochet things I want to try. Um, amongst all the sewing related things I'm doing, like rebranding my patterns, um, writing my pants fitting book to go along with my threads class, and um, coming up with holiday projects for you guys to do this year to tick off some um, gifts off your holiday list. So I have a lot of fun things that I'm going to be doing. I'm kind of excited that I'm not traveling anymore after Houston. So I'll have most of November and December, and I think January I don't have anything going on either where I have to travel. So I can plan my Zoom classes. I can, you know, work on things that I need to be at home for. I still haven't closed my pool, but it's 65 degrees. Like it's crazy here. So I'm going to work on doing those things and I'm going to redo my dining room because I got new used furniture that has all matching chairs and um, it's Drexel heritage furniture that I have. So I have a matching dining room table, six chairs and a sideboard, but I have to paint my walls. So I'm going to have a very energetic end of the year where I'm going to try to get all these things done and learn how to crochet on a tiny hook. So <laughs> I'm super excited. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial to make these holiday or any occasion cards. And Sue, if you're watching, thank you, thank you, thank you for these. They really melted my heart. I opened these up and I was like, oh my goodness, these are the sweetest things. So thank you for giving them to me and, um, you know, inspiring this project. I mean, really, it's your project. Like this is not, a gen I did not put my logo on the PDF. This is Sue Walsh. So um, please send Sue Walsh fuzzy, you know, Happy fuzzies when you're making the cards. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about the, um, the University of Kentucky Master Volunteer Garment Sawyer Program, check out the link below as well. Um, oh, Janet just pre-ordered the new Sew Tights organizer from Sew Tights Stuff and used your link, which gave me the discount. Wow, I haven't even seen the new Sew Tights organizer from Sew Tights yet, Stuff yet. So I'm going to have to go check that out. I do have, and see, this is the other thing. I have so many projects started. I have a, I have a, a thing started to make an organizer for the magnetic cutting board booster magnets, um, which I have started and it's not finished. But I'll have to check that out. Thank you so much for using my... Um, my affiliate link. I appreciate that. Um, but you know what? I'm kind of happy. I'm, I'm really excited to promote, you know, my affiliate link with so tights because you guys get a discount too. I love that. Anytime I can give you guys a discount, um, I want to do that. So 
I'm super excited. And thank you so much for ordering that. I'm going to go check that out and um, see what that looks like. So thank you for letting me or telling me about that. Um, so let me just see. Janet says, I just watched the video on it. Looks awesome. The cutting board magnets fit on the new organizer. That is so cool. Oh, I, and by the way, I know that the new magnetic cutting board, which is back there, see, I, I used it to do all my cutting. I know it's expensive, but I am finding ways to, to use it for more than just cutting things out. So I think as I, as I work with it, I'm going to be sharing more and more uh, tips for how to make it value. You know, like if you're going to spend a lot of money on a, on a sewing tool, you know, what makes it worth the price? And I was making um, embroidering names on Starbucks aprons for my daughter because her manager saw that I embroidered her name on her apron. And so I ended up having to do 24 aprons. I will tell you, if you do machine embroidery, that magnetic board can hold your hooped stabilizer square with the hoop, which then allows you to position the fabric in the hoop accurately. And then I use the sew tight magnets to adhere the fabric in the hoop. So when I picked it up off the magnetic board, all I had to do was slide it in my machine and press go. So I'm finding, I'll be sharing more and more ways to use the magnetic cutting board with booster magnets and ruler for more than just cutting things out. So I'm super excited about that as well. I'm going to do a video tutorial for embroidery on that. Um, probably when I get back from Houston. But anyway, oh, here, one more thing, one more thing. Um, I was using the... Alyssa iron um, pads to press the you know to fuse the interfacing onto my card project this morning and in the instructions it says that you really need to have um, you know I think one of these on a cutting mat might heat the cutting mat so I used two of these stacked on top of each other and I think the full inch depth of it was deep enough, it did not affect my big mat rotary cutting cutting surface. It did not heat it up or, you know, it felt a little warm, but it wasn't like hot to the point where it would cause the cutting board to buckle or bend. So these are amazing. I am in love with these wool uh, pressing mats from Aliso Iron. So <laughs> I have all these new fun toys to play with. I'm like, I feel like I'm a kid in a candy store with all my new things I'm playing with. And I'm telling you right now, I've never been about stuff. Like matter of fact, when Wonder Clips came out, I was trying to figure out ways to not buy them. Like I was using binder clips or, um, you know, like paper clips and different kinds of clips to just try to not buy Wonder Clips. But when you find a notion that really is designed for something specific and it works really really well then it makes sewing so much easier and accurate so that's why I started cool tools because I realized sometimes gadgets are worth it you know and sometimes they're not even expensive so that's why I'm continuing on with the cool tools um, series as well so there'll be a new cool tools on Monday fit tip Tuesday and Tuesday and while you're watching Fit Tip Tuesday, I will probably already be in Houston because my flight is at 5 in the morning on Tuesday. So <laughs> I'll wish you a happy Halloween in advance because I'm not going to see you before then. So to celebrate Halloween, I will post some pictures of my ha my Halloween decorations. I'll post them in the community tab and I'll post them in the Facebook group so you can see them. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this fun little episode of FabFit Friday. When I get back from Houston, I'm going to be doing a new holiday gift that you can make each week. And I'm also going to be working on my bias top with a sleeve. So those are the two things I'm going to finish out the year with during FabFit Fridays. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, Oh, Tana says, I was the same way about Wonder Clips. I bought some in a couple of weeks, and wow, I'm a gadget girl. I know. See, why fight it? Um, I also have some new magic pins to show you, so that's going to be coming up in a Cool Tools as well. So I have also... <laughs> I have so many fun things to share with you. I'm so excited. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. 
I hope you have a lovely weekend. I'm going to be closing the pool, getting ready for Houston, and shooting videos. That's what I'm going to be doing. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Click the link below to get your PDF of the um, spool, the thread spool uh, note card, and watch rewatch the video for the step by step if you need help putting it together. All right. So thank you so much. Have a lovely day, and I will see you again in two weeks. All right. Bye bye.